Sometimes when we begin to question our faith or have doubts about our tradition, it can feel like we are wandering out into the desert. When we take a step back and honestly evaluate organized religion in the 21st century, many times it doesn't make any sense. The more we cling to it and try to save it, the worse it becomes. In addition, widespread abuse, cover-ups, and victim shaming cause some of us to question whether it will ever be right again. The Desert Sanctuary was created by Carl and Laura Forehand. It consists of a podcast, a blog, along with Carl and Laura's writing. We're happy you're here. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon and welcome to the Desert Sanctuary. It is a beautiful Saturday morning um, here in the Midwest and it's it's beautiful out. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll get into a little bit more of that after we introduce our guests. I'm really excited for the guests that we have today. I'm here with Carl, my husband, obviously he's always on these podcasts with me. Um, can't get away from can't him. get away from him, which I mean that's a good thing. Yeah. But anyway, so I'm going to kick it to you before we we get started on the podcast. What's going on? Yeah, not a lot right now, except that I just kind of noticed that over the past few years we've accumulated quite a few videos out on YouTube. Just ask that everybody go out and check those out. There's from all of the the leaning forward videos mm-hmm. that which our guest has been on at least one, maybe two mm-hmm. of those. Um, we're starting to put the podcasts out there also on YouTube. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff out there. Um, people go subscribe and like, and do all those things. So I'm going to appreciate that. Also the book is, well, by the time it comes, I keep saying this, it may not be true, but by the time this comes out, it will probably be back at regular price, but as of today, it's still two ninety nine. So mm-hmm. and it's been good, right? For s- yeah. six months or so. Yeah, been um, doing great. I'm happy with it. Yeah. Happy with just that challenge to to even if you are still an organized religion, to evaluate that and and do the you know, kind of do the hard assessment, mm-hmm. step away from it a little bit mm-hmm. and um, make sure you're part of the solution. And uh, we want you to be in that conversation. So yeah, uh, join us as much as you can in all the different places we are, the blog, mm-hmm. um, Facebook group, and et cetera, et cetera. So, mm-hmm. but we think, but today, that's what not what we're here for. We're here to talk to Carrie. Yeah. So Carrie Hummingbird, she's come back on the podcast and this couldn't be a more perfect time in mm-hmm. my opinion. Yeah. Um, so uh, Carrie, we don't have your bio because you've been on before. You are a friend <laughs> <laughs> but welcome back to the podcast. We're super excited to talk to you today because we are on a journey with you. And I just know it's going to be incredibly transformational. So welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me in here. And um, yeah, I'm very excited to have you guys as part of inner medicine training. Um just really you you asked some really good questions today and it was like wow okay cool this is going to be so awesome um to just have you guys there and to bridge that you know to bridge the worlds between the understandings um from religion and into like the spiritual experience and guys gonna you're like i'm so excited to have you guys with us Yeah. yeah part of part of us wants to stay like kind of stationed next to Christianity, next to organized religion, because we're, we're still kind of speaking out about that and saying, um, you know, at least evaluate it, think about it, think about it and, and consider growth and moving forward on the journey. So positioning ourselves out there kind of in between those two worlds, we see a lot of coming and going. <laughs> and we the, the big thing is we hear a lot of stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and we think stories are sacred. So, um, as as we watch that, um, I think like Laura mentioned right before we started recording, is we we are really challenged right now to grow personally. It seems like we've always got always got people attached to us somewhere, and I, I'm glad for that. That's community. It's so on. But I think. The challenge right now is for us to grow personally. And, and so we're excited to be learning from you 
and kind of share about that today. So um, can you describe, you know, what's, what's your practices, what's your teaching? Um, how does that fit in the big picture of life? So just talk about whatever you want. Yeah. Well, I, what I'm, what I'm really feeling inspired to share is that, um, you know, in my personal family lineage, my grandmother was a Pentecostal Christian, very devoted. So like five times a week or more at church and just like a pillar of the community and really, really devoted to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then my mom came up and was in that environment and just saw a lot of human hypocrisy, right? In terms of like humans not really being able to live up to maybe some of the teachings, right? And got very disillusioned and said, I'm not going to be part of this. And of course, it was a time of the civil rights and Martin Luther King and a lot of things that my mom was like, this doesn't make sense to me. It's not computing. We're not acting with love, you know, towards our neighbors. And I don't, it doesn't feel right to me. Um, so my mom was very feisty and was just like, I'm just not going to participate and kind of left that part of the world and moved to Dallas and started her life and pretty soon had me. Now, she decided not to train me with any religion, right? So she decided to give me a blank slate. So what's really awesome about a blank slate is that um, I've been on spiritual paths with people who um, are from a religious background that grew up in that. And they often tell me, you're able to grasp these things really quickly. It's hard for me to see it or to understand it because mm -hmm. I have all these filters in the way. Right. I have all these shoulds and all these rules and all these perspectives and these teachings and things based in fear that produce fear in my body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard for me to know what's true because I'm afraid. Right. And, you know, and even if it is truth, I'm afraid of the truth. And so for me, I don't have any of that. So I'm really fortunate because I just... I just go with what my body's telling me. Mm -hmm. I'm connected in with my body. I'm connected in with my heart. And I'm listening to that and following that. And I've had my own stuff to decondition. It's not like I'm free of conditioning, you know, but I'm just free of that particular conditioning. Right. And, you know, what I do have is sort of rebellious streak about it because my mom would talk about how she didn't like it. And she's like, you know, she would have arguments with people trying to convert her and stuff like that. So I do have, I've had to decondition myself of that and just see like people are just doing their best. They're trying to really understand. So I just want to presence, you know, my path to say that that's been my, my experience. Now, as I've deepened onto this particular path and as I've opened up my spiritual connection, because I wasn't just woke with my spiritual connection, I had also had to open mine up. Um, mine happened through art. It happened through nature. It happened through painting outside and being connected and, and kind of that meditative space that you get in when you're painting something and you're trying to replicate it on your canvas and you're like capturing the essence of that experience and trying to make it happen on your canvas. That was like my initial door opener to understanding that there's something greater happening here. Mm -hmm. And and it didn't, it didn't flower in me for a long time. You know, I, I got told stories on other of your podcast and other times where I just, you know, being a mother initiated me into this deeper awareness and I wasn't ready for it. I guess I, I was scared of that bigger me. I was, um, you know, I was not sure of myself. I didn't trust myself and my feelings and didn't trust my mother's intuition. And, um, it led to a lot of psychotherapy sessions and taking the not feeling pills and, you know, to eliminate some of the suffering and pain. Mm -hmm. But eventually it all woke me up, you know, and when I started waking up is when I realized um, that I didn't, I was done suffering. I, if I was bad, I was just going to be bad and I'm just done suffering. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm going to find whatever's true for me and I'm, I'm going to, because if I'm made bad, then there's something I can do about that. So I'm just going to go off and live my life and figure out what's right for me. And that's the path that opened the door to realize that the universe thought I was a good idea. You know, I think that's a really, that's something my, my friend Jennifer Huff says all the time, uh, is that the universe thought you were a good idea and so you're here. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Like, yeah. yeah. The universe, God's source creator, whatever you want to, what word you like, what you, word you prefer to describe the one thing going on here, thought you were a good idea, and so here you are. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, because if the infinite creator didn't think you were a good idea, then you wouldn't exist. And so something about you is important to this magical mix on earth, and so you're here. And when I realized that God loves me, 
and created me. And of course it made sense. I was like, well, why, why would an infinite perfect, perfect being of consciousness not make a mistake like creating me if I was a mistake? Obviously I'm not a mistake. I must be here for a reason, warts and all. So I guess I'm okay. <laughs> you know? mm. And it's, so, it's that deepening journey into accepting everything, you know, as it has been. And realizing it had a purpose and I have a purpose and my voice has a purpose. My heart has a purpose. And so does everybody. Um, so I think that's, you know, that's really how I got started. And why do I call it inner medicine? Um, my training is called inner medicine is because of all the years of seeking outer medicine and having it not work. <laughs> Like, quite simply, going to the psychotherapist, going to the medical doctor, go, you know, trying to find the external thing that would fix me and make me more like people expected me to be or like I expected myself to be based on what I was told was the perfect model for mm -hmm. being. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, well, I'm not that. And... I'm going to stop fixing myself and I'm just going to be myself. And just that alone right there take, took me 12 years of mm -hmm. deep work just to be myself. Isn't that crazy? It takes so much work just to be yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I think we're doing here is just we're learning how to be ourselves and accept ourselves the way we are. Yeah. For me, it's, you know, when you say that part of me is just like, oh, so much wasted time. Right. But you don't... From what I'm hearing from you, you don't see, you know, the last 58 years of my life as a, as a wasted time. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, it's not, not wasted. Like, wow, 12 more years, I'm going to be, what, 70? I got to do the math really fast. 70. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's, it's hard for me not to go, oh, you know, I could have been, like, what could have been, what could have been, what could have been, you know what I'm saying? So how, you know. How do you get past that, I guess? And yeah. Maybe that's just part of the journey where you learn to get past that and just, you know, accept what was and accept what is and what will be. I don't know. Yeah. I love that. That's such a great question. What if your life journey was perfectly designed to place you exactly where you needed to be, to experience from the inside out exactly what you're here to heal and transform and uplift. Mm -hmm. And that now that you're ready to remember yourself mm -hmm. in truth, you are remembering yourself and you're placed in a place where you can remember yourself, which is what a mystery school. Mm -hmm. the mystery you're in the mystery you're it's i'm not telling you who you are i'm very clear about that right but i'm holding a container for you to discover who you are mm -hmm. and remember who you are mm -hmm. and who you are is on the inside mm -hmm. and um and so in the remembering of that through a process right it's everybody's process is unique but there are some stages to it that are Part of the hero's what's called the hero's journey mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and their first stage is to wake mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. to holy my gosh this is wrong mm -hmm. <laughs> wake up and go this isn't right maybe some pieces of it are okay but it's like it's not resonating for me anymore something in me is waking me awake like this isn't really resonating as truth like my body is getting sick or i'm just not feeling right about this i feel gunky i feel stuck i don't feel right you know so you're like noticing that and it's like okay it's motivating you because it's uncomfortable to like find something else to clear it like what would make this go away <laughs> and then that's how your soul nudges you like the next over here mm -hmm. and then you find something that makes it a little bit better so you kind of follow that for a while and then you find something and it's like this it's like your soul is doing this it's like just like nudging 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 directing 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 until you get to the eye of the needle right and then yeah. Yeah. and and when you get through that point oh it's not a waste of time at all mm -hmm. right actually exactly what was necessary in order for you to fulfill your purpose at this time on the planet mm -hmm. because you're you've been so immersed in a paradigm mm -hmm. that 
needs major uphaul uh, overhaul. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 because it, you know, like I said, forgive me for what I say, because I am not trained, you know, in this uh, religious system, but I do know enough about Jesus to know that his words were meant to liberate people. Right. His words were meant to open love in a conversation and to embody love as a frequency in the in the body and to remember the self as divine so that death is not anything to be afraid of mm. and this is really matching what the indigenous people have always known which is that we're not um finite beings mm. we're part of something greater mm. and that something greater lives inside of us, lives in our very cells. And science shows us that. Mm -hmm. So this is Jennifer Huff's territory. So I'll just briefly, you know, if you want to know more about this stuff, her book Unstuck probably is a good one to read. But she um, is a physicist and also a spiritual teacher. And um, what she says is that the equation you know einstein was trying to understand the building blocks of the universe and how this stuff works like how are we even here and he could never solve the equation but actually recently they did solve the equation there's somebody who solved it i can't remember the person's name i'm just not this is not my field of expertise but i will say that what struck me was so interesting that the way they solved the equation was because the only way the equation of life works is if life is on the inside of every single one of your cells Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the equation of the universe works because the universe is inside of your cells and you have 75 trillion cells operating at this frequency and the knowledge and everything of the infinite universe. Mm. Mm. That is Which explains why we're only like what 1% physical matter and like 99% invisible dark matter whatever it is that we are. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That is so much you know, more of a picture of how I see God now. And it came from growing sprouts and watching how magnificent they are just from that little tiny seed and that all of that's in there, all that intelligence. In the seed. It's in the seed, right. And so <laughs> some words, I wanted to stop you for a second just because there's words that stick out. First of all, being myself and trusting myself. Um, we've done this podcast 240 something times and so many stories that we listen to have that in them it, it's, it says they say no matter which way they've gone if they become an atheist or they became an agnostic or they went back into religion the ones that thrived the ones that are doing better uh, had that in common they said i had to go inside which, by the way, that's where Jesus said the kingdom of God is. So, yeah, so they had to go inside. And then, like you said, they had to learn to trust themselves and, and discover themselves. Um, so I think that's common. And so, many, you know, like um, when we get rid of that, you also said it's the fear that's holding you back. You know, the fear that was created by religion. When we get rid of that fear, then we can go to, to your class today. And even though we don't understand it, we don't have to be afraid of it. Mm. And then we find when we do that, we find so many commonalities, different traditions, and, and more wisdom, you know, than we can digest, really. But um, I'm, I'm excited about that. And then you use another term. Um, like the universe conspires in our favor is how I heard one person put it. Um, that's uh, for me, that's a hard thing to understand, but it seems like it's a good thing. Um, that just like you mentioned, if the, the divine is in every cell, then it's, it's conspiring to, to reproduce, to get healthy, to purge, things that aren't supposed to be there and to, to grow bigger and reproduce and um, thrive, basically, right? Yeah, I love this. I was coming in as a share of the Christmas story. So imagine being a little kid again, and Christmas is the next day. 
and you know there's going to be presents under the tree. And you've asked for certain things, right? And you're really excited to see if you're going to get it. What makes that so exciting is that you're not sure what's going to be under the tree. Right? You're mm -hmm. not really sure. You hope, but you're not really sure what's going to be under the tree. And because what's under the tree or what you've asked for has to do with what's in your own heart, it's even more fulfilling. Now, imagine a different reality where every single child across the planet that was participating in Christmas got the default Christmas gift for that year, and everybody got the same gift. Mm. Wah, wah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not fulfilling. It's like, so what? We all got the same gift. Right. So just from perceiving and feeling that example, you know where the energy's at. Like, where's the energy? In the anticipation, in the personal journey. That's where the energy's at. The other one's flat and almost disappointing, right? It's like, oh, who even cares? If everyone's going to get the same gift, it's like, what's the point? Right. Mm -hmm. Right? So if everyone's going to live the same life journey, what's the point? Right. But if we're all here to live a unique life, that has twists and turns and surprises and realizations. I mean, the science of this that Jennifer Huff shares is that the telomeres of your cell are like these little things that reach out to get more information. And the longer, the more that you're learning something new, the more that you're experimenting with life, the more that you're being a kid, you don't know everything, so you're you're discovering it, you're reaching out, trying something new and seeing how it goes, the longer the telomeres go and the more vitality you have. When you close down questioning and you won't let yourself question anything and you won't let yourself try something new or go talk to somebody different that has a different perspective or you just close everything into your little safe place, what happens is that you actually are slowly dying because your telomeres shorten mm. And there's no life force getting in. You kind of really cut yourself off from the flow of the universe. The flow of the universe is, uh, is inquisitive. It has questions. And so then contemplating how religion has steered people away from question asking, then you have to ask, why would a religious structure want my body to deteriorate by cutting off the one thing that makes my telomeres grow and vitality increase. Mm. Yeah. To me, that doesn't sound like a very loving God. Yeah. And, and so I don't, I, you know, it's kind of like people have to decide in their own bodies, is God loving and expansive or is God constricting and punitive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, I mean... <laughs> The new book is Inner Medicine. It's going to be out um, April 22nd, um, about a month after this podcast comes out. Mm -hmm. It should be just about right. So, but what's what's that mean? We might have covered it some, but what is it, what is Inner Medicine? You, yeah, you I think I started stuff. hinting on it, but then I got I got pulled into a different direction to talk mm -hmm. about something else. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm always like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Inner Medicine. Because I was always having people on the outside telling me that were the experts, telling me how I should be living my life. And I realized at some point that what I was trying to do was to produce an outcome for myself that on the outside, everybody else had agreed was the correct way to live. So I was trying to produce that in my life. I had a pretty picture in my mind based on this idea that everybody shares that this is how a happy life happens. And for me, that wasn't working, <laughs> that prescription. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was happening instead was that I was getting um, invitations to question things. 
I was getting tested on being individualistic, like following my own path and not believing somebody else had the answer. I was being guided, as I said, the soul kind of like setting things up so that I would question for myself was something's true and and get courageous courageous enough to say it's not true for me whatever you're saying this is true for me that's not true for me or if that is true for you know that's a crappy story i don't like that story so mm-hmm. i got down to the end of the barrel on the um expert opinion paradigm and uh, they were like oh well you have borderline personality disorder and you're going to be sick the rest of your life and you're going to have to take these pills to cope with it and your relationships are always going to be broken and you're just a sad mess and it's going to be that way and you just have to stay in these psychotherapy sessions and sometimes people heal but not very often and that was what i was told and i felt Mm. terrible about myself and i i watched myself because i have enough access to my witness to watch myself take that information and first feel totally shamed and like broken about it Mm. and then decide well i guess that means i can do whatever i want because i can't help myself so then go into total like i guess i could just push the gas on that since i can't do anything about it Mm -hmm. (laughs) and there's not fixing it nothing to lose nothing to lose (laughs) and and then i noticed how freeing that was and then i noticed my heart was closed And then I said, I can't do this. And then I chose to change. But the changing was also leaving that model. Like, I see that you've tried to predict this fate for me, Matrix. And I say, no, there's something more for me. And I feel it in my heart. And the mother I want to be, because my kids were small at the time, right? So I'm a mom. I was suicidal. I wanted to leave the planet. Because why, why should I stay if it's not hopeless? Why should I stay? Mm-hmm. Who would want to live a life like that if that's the rest of your life is going to be like that? Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to stick around for that. That's a sad story. That's like, I'm getting out of the movie theater. I'm leaving. I'm going to another movie theater. <laughs> like, I'll start another lifetime. I don't want to be in this one, right? right? But with those two little boys, they're so sweet, and I love them so much. I said, well, I can't do that. I can't leave my boys motherless. So I won't. I mean, I, I'm not a great mom, but I'm not the mother they have. So I'll mm-hmm. just be... I'll improve myself. Mm -hmm. And so then I set out and I said, well, I'm done with that. I just got fed up. I said, I'm done with this relationship that was reinforcing the patterns that I was broken and, you know, and problematic and the problem in the relationship and all the stuff. I said, I'm not going to listen to that anymore. I walked out of that and then I left psychotherapy. I said, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm done talking about it. It's done for then, you know, I was done talking about it in that way. And then I, at some point I said, I don't even want to get those pills because they don't make me feel like myself. They put like a glass wall between me and myself and I don't like it. Mm-hmm. And I just, I got led, started getting led to teachers. As soon as I walked away from all that, other doors open. So it's like when you close some doors, then new doors open up. It's kind of like you're being funneled through discomfort towards opening the door that you're afraid to open. And then you open that door, you take a leap of faith through that door. Like, okay, I'm bungee jumping out of this door. I have no idea what's on the other side of this door, but it's got to be better than this, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you're ready to heal because you're willing to do anything to heal. When you're ready to do anything to feel better, you'll do anything to feel better, which is probably deconstruct yourself from all the things you think you are up until now, Mm -hmm. which is deconstructing your whole life. And, you know, as part of that deconstruction process, you, you just, th- you want to throw everything out in the garbage. Right. But then at some point along that journey, you realize that's not exactly what you're there to do. You're not there to throw it all out. Mm-hmm. You're there to alchemize it. You're there to take the good stuff and take the stuff that you said is bad, put a light on it, put the light of love on it, shine that light of love on it and go, why was this here? Why is that for me? Where is it landing in my heart? How can I alchemize that to open my heart more and be more loving and kind and gentle? Mm-hmm. And, and through that process, things open. They're always opening and opening, new realizations opening and opening and opening and opening. And it's just like, once, you, once I really started the path, it was like, wow. I mean, it's a journey. 
at first you just want to kill everything you were because you're like, I hate that. And then you learn to love it. Mm -hmm. Then you learn it had its place. It had its purpose. Me, me being seen as crazy and broken and the diagnosis and the 20 decades, 22 decades, 20 years, weekly psychotherapy, I sat on my couch complaining about life. What a waste of time, right? Mm -hmm. Could have been out living and playing with my boys. Could have been doing so many things. Mm -hmm. And I was investigating the tunnels of my mind. I was investigating this consciousness, this mind that creates all these stories and loops and traps you in all these places. I was navigating all the spaces of this mind in the subconscious areas that are just like slippery eels. You know, you have these thoughts that come up and then as soon as you try to grab a hold of it, it slips back underneath and then you can't get it. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if you could pull it out and look at it, you would go, oh, that's not true. Right. <laughs> if you could actually pull it out and look at it, it slides, right? Mm -hmm. It yeah. shucks and jives. It like gets in there. And s so I learned how to track this thing. And then I fell into my actual path. Not to say that wasn't part of my path. That was my mental understanding path, right? It was like my PhD in my mind. <laughs> understanding how this mind thing works and emotions too. Mm -hmm. And then I met a teacher who actually gave all the pieces I needed, several teachers, I was just like, teacher, 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 teacher. I mean, I just, buffet, you know, mm -hmm. I just consumed the buffet. And in that process, what happens is you realize how all that stuff was planned. <gasps> wow. Of course, sitting here today in my purpose, aligned with my purpose as a messenger and as a teacher of inner medicine, I can clearly see why all that stuff happened. Mm -hmm. And so is it fate? Is it destiny? Is it co-creation? All of the above. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You use the word alchemize. Um, sometimes <laughs> I think of things from the past um, as compost. Yes. Uh, or soil, you know, whatever you want to look at that. Mulch. Mul you said mulch today. I kind of like that too. But all of that. You know, provides nutri. I call it providing nutri nutrients for the future. Mm. But you know, compost is something you don't want to get knee deep in. You know what I mean? It uh, stinks. Yeah, Laura. <laughs> you certainly don't want to wallow in it. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although people but do. They <laughs> do, and you know, and at the worst, be serving and worshiping and. You know that thing that's that that maybe had a purpose in your past, you know, but certainly can provide nutrients and a way to move forward now, a way to grow out of that soil. Um, so there's a lot of illustrations in that. I appreciate those. That and I think get. I find myself, I, I'm getting, I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I still, you know find myself wanting to like forget it all like but in in a not a very not a very healthy way like mm -hmm. kind of I'm bitter I don't want this in my life anymore I don't see any good in it um and so when Carl used to I would say a couple of years ago he started using the word compost I didn't want to hear it I mean I'm just like I don't want any part of this so but I do feel like there's been a little bit of a shift. And so beginning to understand that, um, you know, I, I still can't really see, but I'm sure there is good. I just, I can't see it yet, but I'm, I guess, holding on to some hope that, you know, what, what we went through during our, you know, religious or pastoral years, you know, there'll be some, some good that I can take from that someday. It, it has to do with identification. You know, it's, it has to do with how we understand and identify ourselves as. Mm -hmm. And the thing that religious does is religion makes you afraid of being connected with the larger self. Because the larger self is unseen. Mm -hmm. It's the one that lives in your heart, the intuition, that's guiding you and the energy aspect of you that's in your auric field that 
lots of people are aware of now like they have an auric field and their chakras and you know so the religion often makes us afraid of that and then again you have to ask why is so that it cuts off your access to your understanding yourself in fullness mm -hmm. and it places you in fear because when you're in a small self when you're just in the personality that's finite and temporary like you're the temporary self you're the human that's just here on the planet like living a life of 70 years 80 years 100 years when mm -hmm. you're when you're that life is hard and dense and heavy and thick and you know you're in victim consciousness usually really like feeling like life is happening to you and it's hurtful and when we say thank you religion <laughs> And we move beyond it and we say, okay, now I want to understand myself at a bigger context. I want to understand myself as a soul. I want to understand myself as a being of light, as a multidimensional being that is connected with all of life on the planet. When we really open up to knowing that, mm -hmm. what happens is that the small self is placed in a context that is timeless. And eternal yeah. mm -hmm. and from that place you all relax see how that happened when it came in it's like oh that's right you could feel your, your whole body relax because it doesn't need to strive anymore mm -hmm. and when you don't need to strive and push anymore things happen so much quicker it's so weird how that happens like when you stop striving and pushing things happen quicker mm -hmm. because the divine self is now manifesting the potential through you as you for you and that's what christ was trying to say yeah, yeah. so yeah. opening you mentioned opening a spiritual connection right in the that's the early stage that's the first thing maybe i think god said that's the first thing you need to do is open that spiritual connection um, and I like, you know, you're going to open it however you're going to open it. So I want to say there's no wrong or right. I just want to really be clear about that. Like, because there's been so much like, this is the right way to do it. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I want to eliminate the right way to do it. There's actually just your journey. But I want to highlight something that happens. And another person that um, does a great job of explaining this from a Christian um, conversion into spirituality is um, Truth Seeker. <laughs> Truth Seeker has a great podcast. He talks a little, some of that about this stuff. But what he says, and he said it during one of the interviews I did with him, is that when people start to, especially people whose understanding of themselves has been confined to this temporary existence and they've been afraid of the bigger thing, right? Like the bigger self is fearful. You mm -hmm. know, the unknown. The mystery is afraid, right? He said, and they start to open up to spirituality, they usually sometimes not all the time but sometimes we'll encounter things that seem really dark and then get afraid and go oh my god it was right you know i'm scared there's a big dark here and on my journey of opening up i did see things that were dark too now but here's the thing life is a mirror <laughs> so mm -hmm. when you're living in fearful fear like when you're afraid of every like afraid of every corner you're going to turn there's going to be something that will hurt you when you're afraid, mm -hmm. you're resonating at fear. And so in your physical life, you're attracting things, people that are also resonating in fear and probably have some encounters like somebody tried to run you off the road or, you know, just random stuff that's like somebody was rude to you or, you know, was mean or whatever. Like you're just resonating at the place where you're getting bullied or other things are happening mm -hmm. because that's how you're resonating. Same for the invisible world. So you're just resonating at the place where that's what you're experiencing when you open that door. So then you might ask, well, how do I not go through that? Mm -hmm. And I don't know the answer to that question because that's your journey. Mm -hmm. And that's why do you have to go through that? Maybe there's something for you in the revelation of that. Maybe there's some realization that you don't need to let yourself be bullied by anyone or anything or any energy. And maybe you need that lesson so that comes at you in this way and this way and this way and this way and this way until you say no. Mm -hmm. Divine intolerance. No. Not doing that. And 
sometimes people just get the angels. Like they're like, oh, there's angels, you know, and their angels are coming down and I feel the angels. And sometimes people just have a totally open portal of the angels and that's what they experience and it's beautiful and they don't have that issue, right? Mm -hmm. They're not doing it more right than you. They're just having a different life experience. So I think the biggest thing is for us to stop comparing ourselves to other people and trust the process. Like yeah. something is there for you. If you open the door and you feel like demonic energy, it's like, oh, okay, whew, that's a big shadow. What is that? Mm -hmm. And get curious rather than be afraid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, why is that thing there? Why is that energy there? Why am I being tormented? Why am I tormenting myself? These good questions. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you say that because like we've both been dealing with things such as that, that are similar, but different. I mean, but different because Carl's going through it with someone in his life and I'm going through it with someone in my life. And so like when you mentioned that divine stop that, you know, I thought, <clears throat> you know, that's kind of where. I feel like I'm getting to right um, mm -hmm. to where I just, you know, it's not uh, good for me spiritually, just emotionally, however you want to want to say it for me to continue to invite that into my life. And mm -hmm. so like, how would you compare that to, you know, boundaries is the big buzzword. So how do you, or do you compare it to, like setting boundaries for yourself I mean, it's part of it. It's actually a great question because the diagnosis that they had given me back in the day was borderline personality is all about having no boundaries. You don't have any boundaries. So it's a really interesting question for me to answer. So the first thing I'll say is that what people maybe not realize is that they have an auric field. And that auric field varies in size by person. And so some people have a really big auric field because maybe they're just a little older and soul wise and they have a bigger auric field, builds bigger. And when it doesn't mean anything, it doesn't mean you're better or anything like that. It just, it's just bigger. And when you're bigger, sometimes you enter a space and your energy impacts everybody based on how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, when you're doing that, people just know that you're a big impact in the space. They don't really know why, but they're just like, every time Laura shows up and she's happy, everything's great. And so I just like her when she's happy. And every time she shows up and she's angry, it's terrible. And I don't want her to show up when she's angry and I'm sick of that. So I just want her to be happy. So get over it. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. so they want to change you. Right. And also because people are not comfortable feeling things, mm -hmm. which is part of the issue. True. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we have to feel things. So yeah. part of the part of the reaction that people started talking about boundaries is because they don't want to feel whatever it is that's in a space that you have bringing into the space and they don't want to feel it and they don't want to see it and they don't want to know that mirror and they're not ready for that shadow exploration of themselves that making them feel triggered about whatever it is that you're doing or saying and so they want to project it onto you as if it's you're the one that's making it happen but really it's just a resonance in the field between you and them mm -hmm. and then they can talk about boundaries all day long but really what you're doing is shining your light and asking really good questions and inside your auric field are all those questions and realizations you've been having, which are a disruptor for anyone whose field has not yet had those realizations. And so when you walk into the space without even saying a word, your energy is already disrupting everything in the space with the questions. Interesting. You don't have to even say anything because it just happens. And this is another Jennifer Huffism. This is a science of it. How it happens is that your light, because light travels at the speed of light and Photon beams of light are always emitting from our cells, just like plants, mm -hmm. because we're alive. Mm -hmm. And so that light emanates, the light of your consciousness emanates everywhere you go. And so if people are, are starting to suddenly be uncomfortable with you ever since you woke up, it's because your light is shining the frequency of what you realized about yourself. And you're no longer going to play small and be inside a little cage that everybody else is still being in because they're too afraid to wake up. And they're like ostriches with their heads in the sand because they're like, don't wake me up. I don't want to stay asleep. 
Mm-hmm. And they get angry because you're waking them up just by being you. You don't have to even say anything. You're just showing up. Mm-hmm. You could say gobbledygook, and they would be like, what? <laughs> it doesn't matter what you say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, so something as simple <laughs> as confidence, mm-hmm. you know, and being happy, um, mm-hmm. and all that's, you know, more a part of you now could be interpreted as think you're better than us don't you you know it's it's all that you're riding your high horse yeah because the more loving you get i've I've actually experienced this the more loving and compassionate you are for some people that that shines a light into their shadows where they're still working on that Mm -hmm. lesson yeah and it makes them feel insecure because they see you're being a demonstration of love and they're witnessing their shortcomings Mm -hmm. and that makes people judge themselves. So what helps is to be the more not take it personally, which is why we study the four agreements, right? Mm -hmm. Because if we take it and believe me, I've been, and that's another characteristic of borderline personality is taking everything personally because you think it's all about you. Right. And ironically, I'm just going to pull another thread in for anybody that's following the discussions about, um, you know, um, white supremacy and all this kind of stuff. The, the, the model of that has been centering the experience on the white experience. And so there's also, like, people in white skin have been taught to center everything on our experience and make ourselves the fault or the reason why everyone else is having the experience we're having. Mm. And that's something that needs to shift so that things get cleaned up and we no longer center the experience as if it's our fault, but that we just take ownership of the piece that actually is resonating inside of our field. It's like, you know, whatever trigger I'm having and let me work on my trigger, but then let everybody else deal with whatever is their soul's curriculum is going on and don't make ourselves the center of their experience. Mm-hmm. see how we do it all the time we're always putting ourselves in the center of other people's experiences no matter what skin color but if you're in this body that's what you're doing you're putting yourself in the center of everyone else's experience whereas people with brown skin don't do that they do have a different experience they go yikes <laughs> like most people with brown or black skin go stay away from that mm-hmm. they don't try not to get involved with it yeah mm-hmm. That's so it's it's a really interesting paradigm. And I think it's all wound up in this religious construct of the rescuer, the perpetrator, and, and the victim as well. Because it's like the rescuer, the white savior, the rescuer. Mm-hmm. It's all in that too. And so making yourself the savior of other people is another deconstruction, right? Because we're not really here to be the saviors of other people. There's nothing to save. Like I said, there's nothing to fix. There's no fixing. There's nothing to fix. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm giving you guys, a, you guys might be having some cognitive dissonance right now. You're having like some uncomfort, like your brain is like kind of, I mean, sometimes you can get a little uncomfortable and turbid inside your body, like this interb feeling like, oh, some things are deconstructing right now. As you're saying this, it's all deconstructing because you know the truth is underneath there and the truth is shining outside in every single one of your 75 trillion cells. The truth inside your 75 trillion cells is reaching out to connect with my 75 trillion cells and the light is forming between the two and that's what love does because mm-hmm. love unifies and connects. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah. yeah. What what is your what would be your hope for not only the new book Inner Medicine, um, your teaching and guidance and mm. and connect connectedness? Uh, we just appreciate how you've connected with us, and every time we get together, um, it's good. It, yeah, it's, that's, it's, good, it's good medicine. It's but, good. <laughs> uh, what do, what do you hope you're teaching in your in this new book? What what do you hope happens through that, and who you know who might enjoy it? You know, I, I might be reaching for the stars here, but I hope for heaven on earth. I mean, that's heaven on earth. What does that look like for me? To me, it looks like people honoring and respecting each other as unique divine beings, creations of the divine creator that infinitely creates and honoring that all of us are different and we all have different lens and we all have different perspectives and and we're all welcome. We're all part of the divine human family and we all belong 
And no matter what lens the creator is leading us through to discover ourselves, that that's all perfectly fine and well, even if it looks like a hot mess. And, and realizing that we're the stewards of Earth. We're here to take care of the animals and the plants. We're here to take care of the oceans. We're here to take care of the dolphins and whales. We're here to, you know, really care for this planet, for Mother Earth, and give gratitude for this manifestation of divinity in a body. Like, thank you. We're here for that. And I would love for everyone to remember that and come back into harmony together so we can be in equity and harmony and diversity and inclusion and love and celebration and dance and joy and play and singing and all the good stuff, painting, art, creation, creating new potentials, um, evolving upon evolutions and seeing what more is possible instead of dwelling in the same sad human trauma story that goes in a loop and 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 you're just like you're so predictable. Like let's move beyond predictable and into potentials. You know, like I would love to see us birth all new worlds mm. on earth than we have up until now mm. with our limited ideas. So I love to see those expanded and just <laughs> like yeah. what like genius. I would love to see every person shining with their genius. On the planet. Yeah. Um, that was, you know, we just went through with you our very first session, you know, on level one. And um, that was what came through for me was, you know, Mother Earth just telling me, like, you belong, like, you belong. You know, like, I think part of, my existence, our existence is trying to fit in. Right. But, but this was, you belong, you're meant to be here. Like, I really love how you had, you know, mentioned that the universe, you're meant to be here. Otherwise you would not have been created. And it really brought to mind, you know, I, I talk a lot about my grandchildren and how um, there's this connection because we're, um, you know, we're sitting together and, you know, their head to my heart and, you know, and, and like, that is the picture that I got as we were going through our meditation this morning. And it was like, I was the one that was being held instead of the one holding. Yes. 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 I mean, yeah. Like I had tears because it was like, yeah, that's what I needed to hear this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's holding us all. She's, I mean, how can she not? We're made of her. This is the thing that always blows my mind is um, when I finally realized it blew, it blew my mind and then I helped to blow other people's minds because I love to do that. But I was like, oh my God, we're made of Mother Earth. How can we be separate? Mm. Like this body comes from Earth. Yeah. So of course I made, I'm, I'm yeah. made of mm. Earth. I I belong. I'm an Earthling. Oh. And this is why I laugh when people want to go to Mars or some other planet. I'm like, you're made of earth. You're not made of Mars. Like, how are you going to fit it up there? You're made of earth. You're, you're designed to be here. So stop running away from the problem. Stop running. We have to stop running. We yeah. know how to stay. Yes. And work it out. You know, not that I want to give all my <laughs> goodies that I got from our, oh, well. our session, but you know, that was the other thing is right after that, I went outside and brought some plants from the inside to the outside. Cause it's such a beautiful day today. And my feet felt different on the earth. (sighs) They just, they felt different. The dirt, because I was feeling like the dirt in the plants just felt different. Mm -hmm. The bugs that normally would have like, gross, get away. I'm like, there they are. Like, there they are. You know, like, not that I'm in love with bugs, but (laughs) just like, but realizing that we're all a part of this, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just so excited to continue this journey um, and have you be, you know, the one facilitating it. So, so grateful. Yeah. This is really beautiful for me to witness too. It's powerful. Yeah. So with all you have going on, how can people get in touch with you? Tell us where we can find your book when it comes out. Just whatever you want to tell us about what you're doing, what you're offering, how people can learn more about it, maybe even, you know, be a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the book landing page is carriehummingbird.com, K-E-R-R-I, hummingbird.com forward slash inner medicine, all one word. And the first chapter-ish, you know, ish, 
somewhere around there, mm -hmm. is available in PDF, and I also recorded it, audio of it. Um, so that's available when you sign in. And then I have an event on Earth Day. Uh, that's a global virtual ceremony for Mother Earth. That's on uh, 422, 2023. And uh, so the details of that are when you when you sign in and you sign up, you'll get the details for how to access that. So, and then you can pre-order the book. So the Amazon, uh, there's a link inside also when you sign up to pre-order the book on Amazon. Um, yeah, and if you're in the Austin, Texas area, you can come to the the uh, event at Unity Church. We're having a, uh, an, an in-person event at Unity Church in the afternoon that day. So we should come there. We right? should. You should come down. That'd be so awesome. We have when family we, we in San Antonio. Austin. I mean, not Austin, excuse San me, in Dallas and San Antonio. And so, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's going to be great. So that, well, and then if you want to just like um, get a consultation or like I can do a 15 minute connection call, I've got a discovery session if you're more, a little bit more serious than that. Or if you want to try a healing session, you know, um, this is about experience, right? So if you want to try a healing, then cool. I know it's risky for some people listening, like, oh, I don't know about that. But mm -hmm. I work with the Holy Spirit, so, you know, <laughs> always channeling the rainbow light of the Holy Spirit. So if you'd like to try that, um, I feel like my grandma helps me out with that from the ethers, you know. <laughs> She's, uh, yeah. She had that dedicated practice, right? And oh, and yeah. so I think it comes through me. So um, you can go to my website, carriehummingbird.com, K-E-R-R-I. Hummingbird.com, and there's a link there to schedule. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, so happy every time we can gather with, yeah. with you and do something together. Um, so that's more and more these days. <laughs> yeah. So it's even better. Once a week. Um, Woohoo. Yeah. yeah. So everybody out there that's just tuned in, and we, we're glad that you were here today, and I don't know why I can't talk all of a sudden, but <laughs> <laughs> we're glad you were here. And as always, be where you are, be who you are. And be at peace. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today on the Desert Sanctuary. We hope you find who you are as you embark on your own journey. For all of us here at the Desert Sanctuary, be who you are, be where you are, and be at peace.